The president is the chief law enforcement officer in the administration. He's now saying, well, this isn't anything that he's got anything to do with. He's up on vacation in Martha's Vineyard, and his attorney general is going back and doing something that the president said some months ago they wouldn't do. Former Vice President Cheney keeping up the attack on Barack Obama. No vacation from politics. Top Line starts right now. Hello and welcome to ABCNews.com's Top Line. I'm David Chalian. And I'm Rick Klein. Each weekday at noon Eastern, we're bringing you the very latest political headlines, reporting, inside analysis, everything you need and want to know before you head out that door to lunch. Keep the conversation going all day long via Twitter. It's twitter.com slash the note. Let us know what you think. Questions for our guests? Kick this Monday off, sir. What's your top line? Cheney attacks again. Yes, once again, Vice President Dick Cheney is the chief spokesman for the opposition in regarding President Obama's uh, anti-terror policies. This time he's on Fox News Sunday talking about Attorney General Eric Holder's decision to investigate some of the CIA's interrogation tactics. And we're just seeing Cheney just out there once again. Uh, it's truly an unbelievable uh, role he's playing. He really wants to keep up that fight. War review. General McChrystal's much-anticipated assessment of Afghanistan is hitting the Obama administration inboxes today. Uh, Secretary Gates will see a copy of this. The president will see a copy of this. And, of course, there are no actual requests for more troops in it, Rick, but that's where everybody thinks this is going. And that's where the decision is going to be for President Obama to choose from the options that are out there. Waiting on the Kennedys in Massachusetts says they remember Senator Ted Kennedy. They wait on Vicki Kennedy and Joe Kennedy to see whether they have any intentions of trying to fill Ted Kennedy's Senate seat. That is going to shape the race in Massachusetts. We're going to hear later today about the timing of the special election. But that entire field is going to depend on whether there's someone named Kennedy in it. And whether how it will impact if one of the Kennedys wants to be the interim senator, should the law get changed up there. We'll continue to watch that. And health care reset. That is what the White House is going to try to do in this final week before the Labor Day uh, sort of back-to-school mentality invades Washington. Congress gets back to town. Joe Biden out there with a new video today from the White House trying to bust some of the uh, myths, they say, the White House believes are out there on health care. So they're trying to reframe that debate before uh, things get going in earnest. And it's the president's staycation. He's at the White House, but he's still on vacation. For a few more days. <laughs> a few more days. We're going to begin today with the health care debate. We're joined by the chairman of the Republican National Committee, Michael Steele. Thank you very much for being Great here, to be sir. With you guys. Yeah. Um, I, let's begin with this uh, senior bill of rights that you sure. guys at the RNC put out and, and on Medicare. What, you say here that you are going to protect Medicare and not cut it in the name of health care reform. Right. You specify that. We know in your past it's been okay to talk about cutting Medicare in the name of entitlement reform, dealing with deficits. That's a very what is the difference? Why is it okay in entitlement reform, but it's well, not okay in health care reform? Well, because it's, it's not currently a part of any discussion at all in terms of reforming the system. I mean, everybody knows what the, what the end game is here. It's going to be a shortage of cash in, a, in four or five years. Uh, we're talking about health care reform right now, but we're not talking about in the context of existing programs like Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, the trouble, the financial trouble that they're in. So if you're talking about taking $500 billion out of this system, whether you call it a transfer, you call it a cut, whatever you want to call it, you're taking $500 billion out. What does that leave you with when you know the system is already on in, you know, unstable turf? So my goal was to, was to call attention to that uh, and as part of this fall debate uh, as folks come back into town. And we're talking about health care reform. Let's look at the impact it's going to have on our greatest generation. The impact it's going to have on my mother, your parents, or, or family members who take a part of their health care from that system. Uh, and I want to make sure that if we're going to uh, do this reform, uh, that we're not, going to, we're not going to take money from a program that is already on financial uh, hard, hard rocks uh, to, build, to pay for a, a greater growth of government um, in the health care area without addressing these issues. But if it's part issues. of budget savings, that's, that's another story, if it's part, part of uh, reforming the whole system. Well, yeah. I mean, you, you've got to look at you've got to look at the Medicare system as a whole and see that it's in financial trouble. So how do you correct that? What steps? And Republicans have been arguing this for, for 10 years now mm -hmm. uh, and have gotten vilified by the Democrats in the past for even mentioning well, reforming of, ref, entitlement reform right, right. so that it's more efficient, so that the services that are promised to you, you get, and so that the costs are driven down, et cetera. So well, part if you're of taking correcting $500 it, sir, billion dollars out of it, how do you do that? But part of correcting it is to keep the idea of cuts on the table, correct? 
part of correcting of correcting the financial stability financial. of Medicare. Oh yeah, you've got you've you got to deal okay. with those inefficiencies. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, I want to ask you about uh, the aftermath of Ted Kennedy's passing. We've heard a, a rallying cry among Democrats. What would Teddy do? Win one for Teddy. <laughs> in your mind, is it appropriate to, to use Ted Kennedy's memory in this way as an argument for health care reform? I, you know, I can see it, and I understand why the, why the Democrats, and particularly the left, uh, are doing it. I mean, he, he was a champion of this issue for, for a long, long time. Uh, and so I understand that aspect of it, but I'll put it to you this way. Uh, I, have, I am not of a mind to reform health care uh, for the sake of, of anyone's memory, because I'm concerned about how that impacts my mom and my dad. And so, you know, while I admire the legacy of, of a, of a uh, Senator Ted Kennedy, I disagree with his view of health care for this country. Uh, that's part of the debate. But I, I don't want to see the country, you know, be guilted into uh, a health care reform uh, because of the passing, unfortunate uh, passing, passing of, of a great senator. Um, use that memory to, to stoke the debate of the clear distinctions between Republicans, for example, and Democrats on this issue where we think individuals should be empowered to, to create a bottom-up, patient-centered uh, uh, system versus a top-down, government-centered uh, system that the Democrats are proposing. I'd like to turn to national security for a moment. You heard uh, Vice, former Vice President Cheney at, at the top of the show there talking about his criticism of the uh, Obama administration for Attorney General Holder launching yeah. this investigation uh, into this potential detainee abuse. And I, I guess I want to understand, is it not the ideal to have the Justice Department sort of removed from the political consideration so that Attorney General Holder is, is making take, this decision? Why are we taking what is rightly in the purview of the Central Intelligence Agency and putting it in the hands of law enforcement? This is not a law enforcement action we're talking about here. You're talking about individuals who but commit terrorism. someone broke the law, that, 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 that what, it is law enforcement. What, what law did they break? That's what Holder, that's what Holder wants what to look into. What law did they break? What, that, statute, what statutory law did they break? Isn't that exactly what, what Attorney General Holder wants to look into? This, is not, a criminal, this is not a criminal action. I mean, the Clintons have shown the result of that approach uh, with the first uh, bombing of the World Trade Center. By taking that approach, by putting it in the hands of law enforcement to handle what was clearly a, a so international, it, an international terrorist happening event, um, you wind up litigating, if you will, the process uh, in a way that doesn't get you the results that you need. So put this in the hands of the capable individuals who can give you the intelligence, who can act on that intelligence, and help defeat the enemy that you're engaged in. I think the vice president has it exactly right. I think the administration has it exactly wrong. But an even broader point, and the vice president made this, the president himself has says he doesn't want to look backwards. So now he's allowing his attorney general to do just that. And don't give me this, oh, well, that's, you know, we're not engaged and he's doing that on his own. You are the commander in chief. You are the, the principal law enforcement officer of this country. And so if you don't want it done, it doesn't happen. So Hello? <laughs> Did I miss something here in the, in, in the assignment of so duties the Justice, and responsibilities In your mind, here? the Justice Department doesn't have any role in this. They should always just take their cues they from should the take president. Their, they should take their cues from the president. The president should rely on his central intelligence uh, agencies and those who are engaged in the war on terror, period. Uh, I, I want to also turn your attention now to, uh, as your char party chairman role and the future of the Republican Party. I want you to take a listen to something you said on Fox News uh, back in February about some sure. rising stars in the party. Mm -hmm. I'd say uh, certainly uh, uh, Bobby Jindal, uh, Sanford, Governor Sanford, Palenti, Palin. We have a whole host of folks out there uh, that are beginning to emerge on the scene and will, over the next couple of years, I think, redefine this party in a way that uh, will be very good for us long term. Focusing in on a couple of the people you mentioned mm -hmm. there, uh, Governor Palin quit her job in the middle of her first term that the people of Alaska hired her to do for four years, and Governor Sanford uh, didn't tell anyone where he was going in his state, went away to Argentina to be All with right. his mistress, uh, and now your fellow Republicans in South Carolina are discussing the possibility of impeaching him uh, from his office in, okay. in South Carolina. Do you want to do over on that? No, I don't. I, no, I mean, th you asked me the question at that time, and I told you at that time. Now, if I knew what I know now and then, <laughs> my answer probably would have been a little bit different. I, I certainly wouldn't have put Sanford up as one of those stars of the party that we're going to be looked to leadership because he's got other issues he's got to deal with. Uh, on the Palin question, she made a very personal, a very uh, political decision for her uh, to, to uh, get out of the way of her state moving forward because she, her leadership had become a distraction with all the media attention and the attacks. She made, I think, a very personal decision. I respect that. Uh, now, 
when, when Mr. Jeffords is convicted of a crime, does that, does that impute the character of every Democrat in the nation? When the president, former president of the United States is caught with an with a, uh, intern uh, in his, underneath his desk, that does, does that impugn every uh, Democrat in the country? So I don't buy this broad brush uh, sweep that a lot of folks want to do uh, to take, uh, you know, situations involving a Sanford or a Palin and, and make it writ large for every Republican in the country. We have very good men and women that are running for office. We have two great candidates in Virginia and New Jersey who are poised to win the governorships there. We're poised to uh, take uh, seats uh, uh, next year in the House and the Senate. So I, I feel good about where we are as a party. We have a lot of work to do. We have a long way to go. But I feel good about where we are. Do you win back control of the House or the Senate? In time. 2010? I don't know. I'm right. working on it. All right. <laughs> Michael <laughs> Steele, see that chairman time. of the Republican National Committee, thank you very much for being here. All we right. really appreciate it. Really Take appreciate it. Take Thanks care. a lot. All right. Don't go anywhere. We're going to more Top Line in just a moment with Jane Hampshire. Thanks a lot. All right.